the moon. Ancient and unknowable, it has hung tantalizingly in the night sky for all of human history. Cultures throughout world history have venerated and hated it. Lunar deities and mythology are common, as are myths of the man and the moon, or the rabbit, depending on where you hail from. Mooncakes are an offering of good fortune. The full moon is an ill omen. The moon controls our tides, dictates our circadian rhythms, sets the daily calendar for millions of people worldwide. As the largest satellite of any planet in our solar system, relative to its planet's size, it's no wonder the moon holds such a strong sway over the course of human history. And that might just be why we nearly blew it up. To understand Project A119, you need to revisit the world as it was in the 1950s. A cold war between the capitalist First World and communist Second World had manifested itself in the wake of the Second World War. While that direct conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union, tensions were rife in other fields. In the arts, where socialist realism clashed with abstract expressionism, in sports, including the famed Blood in the Water game at the 1956 Olympics, in military science, the burgeoning nuclear arms race developing never to be used doomsday weapons, but most prominently in the sciences, as both superpowers sought to tame the great frontier of space. Assisted by rocket technology developed during the Second World War, both the US and the Soviets pushed further and faster into space in an escalating space race. Throughout the decade of the 1950s, advancements in aeronautics eventually led to the launching of the first artificial satellite, the Soviet Sputnik 1, a landmark in human achievement. The subsequent Sputnik crisis in the West was the manifestation of fears not only of the cultural leap forward that America's enemy had demonstrated, but of its potential for military applications in the future. The Russian word Sputnik essentially translates as fellow traveller, a not insignificant omen in McCarthyist America. The race was on, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was created to keep pace. At this point, conventional histories of the space race will highlight the early success of the Soviet Union, sending the first mammals into space with the ill-fated voyage of Laika the dog, followed by the first human, Yuri Gagarin, before the Americans captured the world's attention by being the first to land a man on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission successfully delivered three-man crew to the lunar surface for history's one great leap. The tortoise had beaten the hare, and victory in the race was impossible to dispute. However, Apollo was not the only program the United States dedicated to beating the Soviets in the space race, and had their first proposal gone ahead, it is possible that modern culture would look very different today. Project A119 began its gestation as far back as 1949, under the auspices of the Armour Research Foundation, a scientific research institute which was then studying the effects of nuclear detonations on the surrounding environment. Perhaps influenced by a 1957 paper by nuclear scientist Edward Teller, which posited experimenting with a nuclear blast on the moon to study its effects, the Armour Foundation launched Project A119, also referred to as a study of lunar research flights, to research the possibility of detonating a weapon on the moon's surface. The project's inception was also fueled by unverified rumours of a parallel Soviet program aimed at detonating a warhead on the moon in conjunction with the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution. A119, a joint project between the Armour Foundation and the United States Air Force, was helmed by Leonard Rifle, a Chicago-born scientist whose previous work had involved research into railgun technology and who had worked alongside Nazi scientists secreted to the U.S. as part of Operation Paperclip. Rifle was joined by, among others, astrophysicists Carl Sagan and Gerard Kuiper on the project, which determined that a blast large enough to cause a mushroom cloud could be triggered on the lunar terminator, the light and dark boundary that separates the near and far sides of the moon essentially creating a massive silhouette which would be visible from Earth. It was hoped that such a raw display of power would boost domestic morale in the United States in the face of the Sputnik crisis and the lagging progress in the space race. Consideration for the nature of the explosive swiftly moved away from the first suggestion, 
the massively powerful hydrogen bomb. For fear not just of its strength, but of the difficulty of launching such a large and weighty payload. The final suggestion was a warhead with an estimated explosive yield of 1.7 kilotons, the equivalent force of 1,700 tons of conventional dynamite. Although not a small blast by any means, this would have been less than a tenth the size of the blast unleashed on Hiroshima during the Second World War, a fact that perhaps speaks more to the atrocity of those bombings than to any precaution made by A-119. This payload would have been carried by an intercontinental ballistic missile, the range of which Rifle believed was sufficient enough to target the moon by 1959. Ultimately, A-119 was cancelled in 1959 at the behest of the Air Force. Its reasons were mixed. On one hand, the fear was that a mistimed launch would miss the moon and potentially fall back to Earth. But even a successful launch and detonation would forever alter the landscape and radioactivity of the lunar surface, sabotaging future exploration, research, and, as was hoped at the time, colonization. Curiously, the rumoured Soviet program was later found to have been true. An early timeline for the Soviet lunar project had included a nuclear detonation as a show of force among its later stages, dubbed Project E-4, but this was scrapped while in early planning for much the same reasons as the American program would later be. The 1963 Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and the 1967 Outer Space Treaty would be the final nails in the coffin for these plans with nuclear detonations in the atmosphere or outer space outlawed internationally. As a military project during a time of high paranoia and confidentiality, Project A-119 remained a buried secret for decades and may have been consigned to the dustbin of history indefinitely, if not for a misstep by Sagan. In the mid-1990s, a biographer researching the physicist, by then a popular television figure for his series Cosmos, discovered that Sagan had discussed the project on a 1959 application for academic research funding through the University of California. This disclosure, potentially a national security risk had it been disseminated at the time, was mentioned in the 1999 biography Carl Sagan, A Life, prompting Rifle to publish an open letter discussing the project and his role in it. By this point, many of the papers written during the project had been destroyed, and freedom of information requests have not been able to uncover anything beyond the single paper, A Study of Lunar Research Flights, Volume 1. The legacy of Project A119 perhaps lies more in what it would have prevented than in what it would have achieved. Undoubtedly, the image of a nuclear mushroom cloud, already an indelible image in the minds of those who lived through the Cold War, highlighted against the lunar surface, would have been an unforgettable display of military and scientific power, which would have echoed down through generations. But it would have come at the cost of manned missions to the moon, at the cost of Neil Armstrong's one small step. The exploration of space still remains the loftiest and most ambitious goal of humanity, and the world in which Project A119 launched its show of force would have been a world in which mankind's lasting memories of spaceflight and the final frontier were engulfed in a nuclear fireball, now and forever, burning in the glare of a judgmental sun. Thank you for watching this Like a Fox production. Please like the video, follow the channel, and let me know what you thought in the comments below.